an ice cold curse. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. talk through a lot of curses on this show. The Poltergeist curse, the Power Rangers curse, the Curse of the Twilight Zone movie, more recently the Waterworld curse, to name a few. But never have we talked about a movie curse so powerful that it created death and havoc before it even filmed. Today, we're talking about a fish-out-of-water comedy with a sinister reputation for allegedly and conspiratorially stopping the biggest 80s comedians from fulfilling their promising futures. Let's get into the curse of Attuck. It all begins with a man named Mordecai Rickler, a Canadian author and essayist who wrote a book called Stick Your Neck Out, and later The Incomparable Attuck. The Incomparable Attuck, published for American audiences under McClelland and Stewart in 1963. The novel told the story of a Canadian Inuit who is brought to the metropolitan super city of Toronto and very quickly drops the ideology of his native people to become a big city asshole. The incomparable Attuck slash Stick Your Neck Out satirized Canadian cultural elitism with Toronto bigwigs fetishizing Attuck and then reframing him as a symbol of Canadian nationalism and anti-American sentiment. The book wasn't canonized in Canadian or American literature, but it was successful enough to warrant discussions of adapting the novel into a film. In 1971, iconic Canadian director Norman Jewison bought the rights to the film adaptation, and planned to shoot the movie after another little adaptation he was working on, Jesus Christ Superstar. Screenwriter and former National Lampoon writer Todd Carroll was brought in to pen the screenplay. Along with his satirical writing, Carroll had previously written Clean and Sober, starring Michael Keaton and Morgan Freeman, and National Lampoon's Movie Madness with Diane Lane. He called the screenplay Attuck, and it is, well, very 1980s comedy. In Carol's version, Attuck is an Alaska native with dreams of living in New York City. It starts with a beautiful documentarian named Michelle Ross arriving to film in Attuck's village. Attuck sees his chance to get out of Alaska with this crew, this film crew, and impulsively stows away in Michelle's plane. When the documentary crew lands in Canada, Michelle discovers they have Attuck in tow. Whoops. At that point, she has no choice but to take Attuck back with her to New York. Apparently, everyone in New York is fixated on Alaska because in Manhattan, a powerful real estate mogul named Alexander McEwen is planning to build his own big city there, called the Emerald. McEwen is clashing with environmentalists over the project because they say his big city will harm the environment. Meanwhile, McEwen is also having problems with his drinking, smoking, bad boy teenage son Bishop, who one night goes joyriding in his boat and crashes near the pier where Attuck is conveniently hanging out. When Attuck sees Bishop struggling in the water, Attuck saves him and they become fast friends, going out for crazy boys' nights on the town in New York City. Alexander seems to think Attuck is actually a good influence on his son and invites him to move in with them, with the plan being that Attuck would eventually move permanently into one of the real estate mogul's glamorous hotels. McEwen also reveals to Attuck that Michelle, the documentarian, works for him and tells Attuck he wants him to be the face of the Emerald. Attuck accepts. Bishop is sent off to military school and is also angry at Attuck for having sold out to his father. Then, Michelle and Attuck travel back to Alaska to shoot promos for the Emerald Project in an attempt to reassure the environmentalists that the new city is totally cool because he is involved. Attuck, now a big city party boy, feels belittled by the promos. He's put through hair and makeup to look more fringe, more native. But at the same time, there is sexual tension between Michelle and Attuck, tension that cannot be ignored. At a viewing of the now-wrapped promo shoot, Attuck realizes McEwen has taken advantage of him and is very angry. In retaliation, he breaks Bishop out of military school using a dog sled, hurries to a hearing about plans for the Emerald, and convinces everyone there that it is very, very bad. Investors pull out, and Attuck and Bishop reconcile. Attuck returns to his village, but the next day Michelle arrives in a plane asking him to go to Hawaii with her. Attuck, of course, wants to go to Hawaii with the beautiful documentarian, and the two fly off in the plane with Bishop in the co-pilot seat somehow also invited along. The screenplay reads very much of its time, and being a movie written in the right place and time by the right guy was, by all accounts, on its way to getting made. 
But who would play the lead, the hilarious Alaskan native with a heart of gold? Well, again, this was the 80s, so of course they weren't looking for any actual indigenous people, but white comedians who could sell tickets. First, they turned to John Belushi. Belushi first read the role of Attuck in the beginning of 1982 and immediately expressed interest in the project. He was hired and set to play the character on screen, when only months later, on March 5th, 1982, he was found dead in his room at the Chateau Marmont in Hollywood, California. According to the book Hollywood Myths, The Shocking Truths Behind Film's Most Incredible Secrets, the former Saturday Night Live cast member had the script sitting on his coffee table when his body was found. After Belushi's death, comedian Sam Kinison signed on to play the lead in Attuck, and in February of 1988, production was finally underway. But eight days after filming started, it was shut down. Says Carol, when it came time to start filming, Sam wanted it rewritten. Once they started shooting it, it had accumulated a lot of costs. In a later interview, Kinison said that his manager, Elliot Abbott, promised him creative control without clearing it with the studio. When Kinison attempted to rewrite the script, as he was promised, he was told that he could not. Quote, I didn't walk off the picture, he insisted. They shut it down. I was very professional. I even went to dog sled school, so I was prepared for the part. They tried to find someone to replace me, and only when they couldn't did it shut down. Kinison eventually parted ways with his manager, but not before United Artists filed a lawsuit against Kinison that same month, February 1988, in which they said that Kinison threatened to intentionally give a substandard performance if his needs were not met. And it was true. Nobody could replace him in the time frame, so for years, Attuck was just at a standstill. Until April 10th, 1992, when Kinison died in a head-on collision with a 17-year-old drunk driver. His wife, Malika Suiri, whom he'd married in Vegas just six days earlier, was also in the car but survived. Kinison was just 38 years old at the time of his death. Let's take a breath and take a break. Priceline presents Go to Your Happy Price. What's up? It's Kaylee Cuoco. When it comes to travel, we all have a happy place. You can see yourself already there. It's beautiful. It might be sunny and sandy for some, neon and urban for others, deserts or rainforests or hiking trails. With Priceline, you can get to your happy place for a happy price with deals you really can't find anywhere else. Like up to 60% off select hotels to Costa Rica or five-star hotels for two-star prices in Cabo. Go to Priceline.com and travel to your happy place for a happy price. All right, see ya. I'm off to Miami. No, actually, wow, look at that. No, I I'm going to Hawaii now. Ooh, Cancun looks nice. You know what? Belize looks pretty nice this time of year. Or, mmm, Palm Springs. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hi, this is Will Arnett. I, we, are inviting you to follow us as we go on tour and we take our podcast, Smartless, on the road. Join us and watch any boundaries we previously had disappear. Like you've never seen us before, you'll see us on the road, ordering lunch, roasting each other, and on stage as we surprise each other with a mystery celebrity guest in each city. Boy, that sounds amazing. Welcome to, to Smartless! Don't miss our new series, Smartless, on the road, streaming only on Max. Subscription required. Hi, hello, how are you? Hello. How are you doing? How's it going out there? Is it good? Are you feeling good? Yeah. We'll take a so-so. So-so or a, eh? Yeah. We'll mm. take, a... take a grunt. Yeah. Honestly, you can just ignore this. Yeah. Just ignore this and we'll be like, that's cool. A-okay. We take what we can get. Always. <laughs> Always. Always. We want to say hello to anyone who's listening, spreading the good word of Ghost Town. Thank you very much. Going out there. Putting your neck out there. Boots on put, the ground. Putting it all on the line. <laughs> That's right. Heroes. Yeah, it's controversial to like ghost town. Mm -hmm. It's very political. Yeah, it's political. It. One side or the other. I know. It's, people fear yeah. the truth of liking our podcast. But you don't have to fear anymore. No. Be free. Yeah. Talk to someone about it. Yeah. Be happy you have people to talk to. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty I don't great. know why you're complaining. Text someone. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You have people to talk to? Yeah. Great. Amazing. Send them our way. <laughs> yeah, please. And... Our only friends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not only fans, our only friends are our government. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of mayors. <laughs> this mayor, you can find out there protesting, saying, no more jetpacks. <laughs> Done with jetpacks. Wow. Sick and tired of the jetpacks. Wow. Enough with the jetpacks. 
all the transportation's <laughs> already out there. Has had enough of the jetpacks. W- way to take a stand, Ashley Matson. Hello. This mayor is out there just chanting <laughs> and stopping traffic. Saying, "Don't do that." <laughs> saying, "You know what? You know what?" No more silly string. <laughs> Done with the silly string. Jesus Christ. It just, you know what? It's It makes people look like a fool when they get sprayed with it. Mm-hmm. It's bad for the environment. Oh, wow. It says silly right in the name. <laughs> Why are we wasting our time and resources? And who's going to clean it up? Wow. Who's going to clean it up? Brave. Catch <laughs> Hello. You'll find this mayor out there protesting, just out there right in the middle of the street, hand up. Personal Tiananmen Square. Get out of the street. No. No. What is this person protesting? No more Tubi. <laughs> no more the channel Tubi. Nobody wants Tubi anyway. Is there something no. to be protested? No more Tubi. Enough with the Tubi. <laughs> We're good with the Tubi. You could tell it was a throwaway name. <laughs> we have a show in development at Tubi. <laughs> We Unless don't. you're we Tubi, don't. we don't. We don't. Unless you're Tubi, we'll do whatever Hire you us. want. Yeah, Hire we'll us. do it for free. We'll pay, Fast we'll pay you. We'll pay you. Fast forward just thirty to two minutes seconds. Other than that, Charlie Gilbert. Hello. <laughs> and out there with megaphone, nice standing there on a literal soapbox. That's good too. You know what? It works. It, it works. elevates you. Where do you get a soapbox anymore? You gotta buy a lot of soap. Amazon probably. <laughs> 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 out there protesting any other podcast beside ghost town <laughs> hero. um hero fucking hero i mean the last hero <laughs> the only hero don't watch marvel movies there's no heroes there Mm-mm. there is only one hero protesting every other <laughs> podcast except ghost town i would like to listen to other podcasts though so it's really kind of get thrown back in our faces <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a catch-22 it's a prison in a way yeah but we like it Casey Weber. Hello. And our governor. Mm. Making rules, just break the rules. Yeah. Make some and break some. That's right. You don't know what you're protesting, if you're for, you're against. You know, it doesn't matter. Can giveth and taketh away. At whim. Doesn't care. Asked to have a show on Tubi. <laughs> said no thanks. Yeah. Said, how about a free jetpack to get around? Don't need mm, it. Silly string around? No, 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 no. No. And was like, hey, how about listening to another podcast? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Our governor, avian, avian noble. noble. So want no ads, no chit chat. Bonus episode, just the good stuff. You want to binge, binge and you want to save time. Save it. But not money. Mm-mm. Head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash ghost town pod. You can try it for seven days free. You can mm-hmm. check it out. See if you like it. If not, you can leave. We don't care. Yeah, that's saving money. Yeah. Or you could uh, support us additionally if you would like to. That's nice, too. If you have two American dollars. Just two, we don't take anything else. Yeah, we just take $2 and bills. And not cash. No. You have to have a credit card or no. some kind and of not payment. not OnlyFans credit. No, but no. But if you have We've it, been down that road before. Try, trust me, we tried. All right, fool me once. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I was trying I to log in so. like crazy. It yeah, was like it was there's nothing here. frenzy. There was a lot <laughs> happening that day. But head on over to patreon.com slash ghost town pod. Have three Apple Podcasts. Are you reviews. are you kidding? Are they can you tell me are they mostly good or mostly bad? My dad is sitting in another room listening to this. They're all five stars. But okay. you know that doesn't mean anything. It's a okay. trap. That's, it's that's a trap. Like a it's trap. trap. Stars don't mean anything to us. Yeah. If we've learned anything about these reviews. Yeah. New segment, five stars. Jason has been reading the iTunes reviews. <laughs> a level of drama that hasn't been seen, heard since MTV singled out. Will Jason read a review? Guess we need to listen weekly to find out. Will Jason and Rebecca become anti-vaccine people or be featured nude in Playboy <laughs> and follow the Jenny McCarthy path? Oh. Maybe, maybe they will both... Mary Wahlbergs. Yeah, all of it's possible. Maybe I am a Wahlberg. Sup, Rebecca. Wink emoji. <laughs> this is from Germ Gal in the US and A. Mm. And then, uh, wait, there was other ones. That was a good one. I'm buzzing off of that one. Who knows what my future holds? Five stars all around. Five stars. <laughs> nice, nice. I personally enjoy the tone and vibe I get with each episode. You guys present all the facts with just clarity and keep everything crisp and clean. No caffeine. That's no. incorrect. <laughs> That's not right. Please send us caffeine. <laughs> Thank you for all you do and keep them coming. This is from more than a local boy, USN Day. Love it. Thank you. One more. Review and a request. Five stars. Mm. 
Hmm. Hello. I love your podcast. The topics you cover are always compelling, and a lot of time it is new information I have not previously heard about or read about. I especially liked when you covered the Kate Yup conspiracy. Yeah. Ugh. I made my family listen to that one on a road trip from Georgia to Mississippi. That must be weird to be like, hey, what do you guys want to do? You want to like listen to music? How about Ghost Town podcast? Yeah. How about a podcast about a a, a mukbang <laughs> um, a missing woman who eats seafood on YouTube? They're like, great. Does that sound good? Do you have 25 minutes? Speaking of conspiracy, I would love it if you made an episode about Britney Spears and if she's oh been God. AI deepfake <gasps> since sometime last year. That's been kind of buzzing on TikTok. Oh. TikTok has me convinced that this is happening. Keep up the great work and thank you. That's from Oh Snap. It's Britney, US and Day. Britney's Graham, the podcast that kind of was a big instigator in the Free Britney movement, um, Friends of the Podcast. I was on their podcast. They're a different comedy podcast of theirs, Lady to Lady. And so I would love to do Britney Spears, but they do it so well already. Maybe developments we can get into, but there's a lot going on there for sure. I have one more. This is via Instagram message. I believe someone who tried to leave a review on Spotify. And please, mm-hmm. anywhere you leave a, a review is great. If you have already, oh my thank God, you. Please. please, any traffic is good traffic. Get it to us. Yeah. I would like to point out, I did listen to your podcast and love it. I would like to say Spotify, when it was starting to have podcasts, the first few podcasts never had ads because they were just starting and wanted people to get on the podcast. So maybe the individual was used to listening to those podcasts with no ads and thought mm. there wasn't going to be a you know, button. That's possible. Like I said, different okay. different okay. platforms okay. might have different ways of doing Do you feel less it. angry about that review? Well, I said that during the thing. Yeah. I, I said that could be it. I love you guys. I to every single podcast of yours. My favorite was the Denver Airport. Yeah. Listen to it four times now. And can stop listening to it. Love you guys. Keep on the amazing podcast. That's from Dr. Thax on Instagram. Incredible. I love I love it. And I love hearing also that we cover things that people don't cover because I think we both make such a huge effort to kind of dig deep where we can and find something that like hasn't been covered by every true crime podcast that we listen that I listen to personally. Um so I love it. Thank you so, so, so much. You want to turn another page in this screenplay, in this doomed screenplay? That's right. Let's do it. Sam Kinison has died. It is incredibly sad and very surprising. So at this point, the Atta crew has to regroup. The script was then sent to John Candy, who also at one point expressed interest in playing the film's lead. Candy was at that point a bona fide movie star, coming off with some big hits, including Planes, Trains, and Automobiles and Uncle Buck. Officially, he became attached to Atta. But on March 4th, 1994, while on a break from shooting Wagons East in Mexico, Candy was found dead in his bed, likely the victim of a heart attack. He was 43. Next to be considered for the lead in Attuck was Chris Farley, coming off of Shrek and slated to be starring in a third installment of the blockbuster hit Ghostbusters. According to Hollywood Myths, he was enthusiastic about taking on the role of Attuck. But Farley, of course, was grappling with a major drug problem, and on December 18th, 1997, After a four-day bender, his younger brother John found him dead in his Chicago apartment. His cause of death, which you might already know, a lethal combination of cocaine and morphine. He was just 33 years old. Other actors who were attached to the role of Attuck also died young, and often mysteriously. National Lampoon writer and the first SNL head writer and good friend of John Belushi, Michael O'Donoghue, Michael O'Donoghue was at one point connected with the script and suffered a long history of chronic migraines. In 1994, the same year John Candy died, Michael O'Donoghue died of a cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 54. Phil Hartman was also associated with the film's development. You know where I'm going with this. On May 28, 1998, Hartman's wife, Bryn, who had been drinking, got into an argument with her husband. After he went to sleep, she fatally shot him between his eyes, throat, and chest with a 38 caliber handgun. He was 49 years old. Somehow, after all of this, Hollywood could not put this script down, despite its reputation of now having a bona fide curse attached to it. In a 1999 interview with Todd Carroll, he is asked about the curse of Attuck. He responds, quote, No matter what anybody's impression was, I think it's either coincidence or a practical explanation. I'm not a superstitious person, and it doesn't have any meaning to me. But the internet disagrees. According to a Reddit blind item, The film not only has a curse, but a tie to the number eight. Quote, there is actual substance to one part of this curse. Quote, it is something that has been whispered about for over three decades. The legend has grown over time to something almost mythical. I wrote a blind several years ago about the only actor death I really attribute to the curse. There are other deaths, but they are not mentioned because they are all below the line people or people who are just extras. For eight days, there was filming of this cursed movie. Eight days of film footage. 
eight days of people working on the movie. The film footage is kept in a vault. It almost feels Jumanji-like. I wonder if noises can be heard emanating from the vault. Because it has been three decades, a lot of people who worked those eight days, of course, have died of various causes. However, there have been at least a dozen murders, vehicle accidents, and unexplained deaths of people who worked those eight days. No one will even watch the footage any longer. Back in the day, people used to dare each other to watch it, but apparently someone who watched it got hit by a drunk driver and died on the way home from watching it. I have never been able to confirm that, and I think it is probably not true, but I do know that people stopped watching it because of that story. So, is there a curse? Is there a curse to this movie, a curse of Attuck? You can find the screenplay online as well if you dare read it, and you can make your own conclusions, come to your own conclusions, rather. Maybe. Hard to say. Skeptics point out that there were other actors who didn't die early in tragic deaths who expressed interest in playing the lead role in the movie, like Will Ferrell, Jack Black, John Goodman, Josh Mostel, and Jonathan Winters, who lived to the ripe old age of 87, dying in April 2013. Though believers say that in Winters' case, the curse was actually still on, as it might have indirectly led to the death of Robin Williams, Winters' protege. At the time of his 1999 interview with the LA Times about the film's curse, Todd Carroll was living in Tucson, Arizona, miles away from the movie business, writing a murder mystery. I tried to find him online. He is not on social media. I have no evidence that he wrote or that this murder mystery was published. And honestly, there's nothing really about him on IMDb for a very long time. But I want to leave you with an optimistic quote from his LA Times interview after a lot of very hard information to process. The quote is, when asked about a potential revival of Attuck, he cautiously and lightly replies, with the right actor and right tone, it may have been a nice movie. If you like weird and strange history as much as I do, then I have the podcast for you. I'm Jason Horton, host of Strange Year. Each episode, I break down the strange history and cultural happenings during that year, like 1977, the Wow Signal, 1963, Three Tramps Theory, 1844, the Millerite Movement, 1997, the Phoenix Lights, 1896, the Shortest War, 2004, Benjamin Kyle, 1518, the Dancing Plague, 1985, the Move Bombing, 1972, Remote Viewing. So to get your weekly weird history fix, pause the podcast you're listening to right now and subscribe to Strange Year wherever you listen to podcasts. Did you know that Disney World was originally meant to be a Bioshock-style libertarian utopia and that Walt Disney lobbied the Florida government to allow them to have their own creepy independent government, which they still have to this day? (gasps) Or how about the fact that 90s school supply company Lisa Frank was run by violent, tyrannical drug addicts who abused their employees? (gasps) Well, did you know that there's a Japanese guy who killed and ate a woman in the 1970s but due to a legal loophole was never put in prison and became a weird Japanese celebrity who wrote food reviews for magazines? Well, actually, we did know all those things because we made episodes about all of them and many more on our podcast, Deep Cuts. Deep Cuts is a deep dive explainer show that explores fascinating but true stories that you won't believe you've never heard about with deeply researched, sometimes shocking, sometimes hilarious episodes. The show is like a really juicy documentary for your ears mixed with Mystery Science Theater 3000. Deep Cuts has new episodes every single Wednesday for free. Just pause the podcast you're currently listening to and go subscribe to Deep Cuts anywhere you get your podcasts. Hi! Did I scare you? I hope I did. My name is Selena Spooky Boo and you might know me from some places as of TikTok where I do some sleepwalking and dad joke videos, but what you don't know is that Selena Spooky Boo has a podcast, The Haunted Estate, that's been around for uh, an embarrassing long time, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's full of the scary stuff, the spooky stuff, the hard stuff, and hey, some of the funny stuff. So come on over and hang out with us and check out The Haunted Estate.